So greetings everyone, I'm Karen Jane Casey and this is Abundant Living with Karen on stormtalk365radio.com. The underlying purpose of this podcast is to share the good news of Jesus, where there's hope for us, especially having a heart for the lost and the needy while we struggle in a world of chaos. Please be assured that during this 20-minute episode, there will not be any lecturing down at you. There will not be yelling and preaching at you. I'm only sharing what I've learned and what I'm still learning as I study and read the Word of God and through my experiences. And you know what? We live, we learn together. I'm, I'm eager to hear what you've learned. You can contact me at KarenJaneCasey.com. Your testimony is important, and someone does need to hear it. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you. We are filled with gratitude for all that you've done for us, Lord. We cast our cares on you. We fear no evil because you are always with us. We, Lord, we pray, we ask that you save, heal, and protect all of our loved ones, all of their loved ones, our acquaintances, our friends, our community, our country, and Lord, we even pray for our enemies. We know with God all things are possible. Please forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lord, help us to become more and more like Jesus. Thank you for your unconditional love, compassion, and mercy. Your grace comes through Jesus Christ. And Lord God, help me today to share your message for the people here and for let them to be find healing in Jesus name. Amen. Our episode today is waiting patiently. We'll start out with James 5 verses 7 and 8. Be patient then brothers and sisters until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for his land to yield its valuable crop. Patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. In regard to planting anything, whether a gardener planting flowers or a farmer planting his crops, in, and we, we get it that we have to wait a while before the harvest happens. And during that waiting period, we have to be patient we can't rush the process. Meanwhile, we have to put a lot of faith and trust in it, that the weather conditions, various animals, insects, flooding, and so on, will not cause harm to our flowers or our crops. It could be our livelihood that is depending on that great harvest. We're told in Luke 13, not to worry about what we eat or what we might wear. We should have our focus on the Lord and His kingdom rather than on our earthly treasures or even our basic needs like food and clothing. The Lord even cares for the raven or the sparrow, so He cares so much more for us. Sometimes, while we do a certain amount of faith and hope, we may presume or make an assumption during the waiting period Oh, that God must have meant for us to do this or that. And we go ahead with our own plan. Where does that get us? Just like Sarah, when God promised her and Abraham that they would have children. But she was barren and they were old. After some time, Sarah got the bright idea. Oh, this is what God meant. He meant for me to get children through through my servant. Well, that was a big mistake, and it didn't turn out very well, did it? I had a recent lesson in my own life. I regularly do pray about my schedule, my daily planner, that if I have planned something, anything, incorrectly, inappropriately, or there is something that is not in His will, then then God will change my plans. I ask him to close doors and open doors. But then I received an opportunity to go to God's country. Now I'm not talking about West Virginia this time. This time I'm talking about Colorado. Some years back, 
My husband and I went there, and I always wanted to go again. The view is spectacular. Truly, God's country. So here was my chance to go with a group of fellow women authors. And my husband said that he would spring for the cost as a birthday gift. That is awesome. I had a slight twinge knowing that I had agreed to work at the annual fundraiser at Yeshua's house. So I, I gained the folks agreement and then I thought it was okay. Yes, I paid all the fees up front, ready to go. And then a few weeks later, kind of an afterthought, I realized that I had not prayed about it. So I did. And that door closed. <laughs> that event is not happening. So I accepted that it's God's will. If I had prayed first, first, maybe I wouldn't be caught up with the flight fees. I know the story that many people told about reasons why they did not make it to work on the day of 9-11 when the Twin Towers were attacked. Yes, I accept it. That door was closed and I could have prayed, patiently waited for the Lord to let me know if I should go. And maybe I should have not have been so quick to get out of an obligation. I did have a twinge of guilt, but I had pushed it aside. That was a lesson for me to learn. Pray first, and if you have obligations, think about that. Psalms 25, 4 through 9. Show me the ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are my God, my Savior. My hope is in you all day long. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. I learned that this is also applies to when we really want to do something or to go somewhere like Colorado and we haven't consulted with the Lord and we thought it might be easy to shirk our responsibilities. Are you in the midst of circumstances that are unfair? You pray, maybe you're striving to wait patiently, but you wonder, when will my relief come? When will this come to an end? Well, you know, our Creator does not have to give us answers on why something happens or isn't happening. But we are to know this with faith. God is love, God is good, and God is justice. Isaiah thirty eighteen. Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice, blessed to all those who wait for him. So he's patiently waiting on us, and he is justice. We need to realize that his will is perfect, and he will accomplish whatever is right, whatever is in his perfect will and way and timing. It may not be at all what we had hoped for or what we expected. He knows the whole picture while we only see a small, small little sample. Thankfully, thankfully, we're given many promises from the Lord with justice in mind, a sowing and a reaping. Psalms 37 verses 7 through 9. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. Pay attention to verse 9 now. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Promise. Psalm 37, 34, wait for the Lord and keep his way and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look on when the wicked are cut off. 
Isaiah 40, verse 31. But they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I like that promise. James 1, 12. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. I want the crown of life. How about you? And finally, James 5, 11. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Well, you might remember that Job lost everything he had, but the Lord restored it all to him, even more than he had originally, because of his steadfast faith in the Lord. So which of these promises do you want to receive? Which one appeals to you the most? I like to receive all of the promises. So, so what do we have to do to receive them? We need to demonstrate our hope and our faith by waiting patiently on the Lord in whatever circumstance we might be in. We keep on keeping on. We don't give up. He has been waiting patiently for us to come to him. We can decide to turn to God, our creator, we can accept his love and believe what he did for us. So how much does he love us? John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus told us himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by, but by me through me. In Romans 10 9 we learn that when we have faith in Jesus knowing that he defeated death we have the promise of eternal life. Whatever circumstances or situation we may face we need to have faith, believe, and pray. We have free will in each decision. I hope that we say yes to the Lord when he prompts us. Our Heavenly Father, the King of the universe, wants us to choose him. Well, I ask you this important question. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Your response is a matter of life and death, eternal life. Together we can confess him out loud in this simple prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I know who Jesus is. He is the only begotten Son of God. And I know what Jesus did. He died on the cross for me. And he arose from the grave. Dear Jesus, I admit I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I repent of my sins. And Lord, help me to stand firm from that sinful living. I need you, Jesus. I am hopeless without you. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart be my Lord and Savior, and I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. With this prayer, we believe and we pledge to serve Jesus. I encourage us all to have faith, study the Word of God, pray, love, remember His plans for us. I encourage each of us out of gratitude to serve the Lord by serving others. We can strive to be more like Jesus. Well, I want to give you some final encouraging passages regarding waiting patiently. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. And you can say, while you patiently wait on the Lord, as in Micah 7, 7, but as for me, I will look to, to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. And so I say to you, 
As the Apostle Paul said to the Colossians in chapter 1, May you be strengthened with power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode on Abundant Living with Karen, and I pray that we all will be encouraged and better equipped as we continue our journey. This is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, domestic violence advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Abundant Living with Karen every Tuesday morning at 7. And also, Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 6.30. And Sharing Moments with Karen every Wednesday at 7. All of them are at Eastern Standard Time. You can download and listen anytime. You can simply Google the podcast name and find them on the Internet. These podcasts are with stormtalk365radio.com. We're available on iTunes, Twitter, and Alexa on Amazon, hosted by iHeartRadio and Spotify. My website, karenjanecasey.com, is C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. I would sincerely love to have any feedback and suggestions from you. Please share your experience with this podcast. So before closing, I want to share with you about a special event that's coming up this month, September 20th, for my favorite nonprofit, which is Yeshua's House, spelled Y-E-S-H-U-A. Yeshua Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus. So Yeshua's House is a faith-based, 18-month safe haven or transitional home for women and their children coming from domestic violence and financial hardship. As a domestic violence advocate, I've been a board member since for four, four, over four years now, and I help facilitate some of the classes. Tickets are now available for the annual fundraiser dinner to celebrate the Lord's faithfulness to be held on September 20th with the well-known awesome Hope Coach Tawana Williams as our speaker. And um, as I said, tickets are now available through Eventbrite. And I bought my ticket through Eventbrite, and I found it to be a positive experience. I, it was easy to find. I received details about the event, and payment was easy. Being a nonprofit, Yeshua's House does depend on donations, and all of those gifts are tax deductible. Checks can be sent to Yeshua's House. Post Office Box 143, Petersburg, Virginia, 23804. Or you can donate to the website, yeshuashouse.net. The founder, Angela Brown, can be contacted directly at yeshuashouse2, the number 2, refuge, at gmail.com. Also, you could call at 804-605-3841. Well, thank you and God bless.